Hi everyone, in this lecture we would like to discuss the relay and its types. So what is the meaning of relay? We discussed before the meaning of relay, but now we are going to repeat it again. So the relay, it is used to detect the abnormal conditions, such as the short circuit or overloading. Then it supplies the signal to circuit breaker for the circuit interruption. So we said before that the relay acts as the brain in the protection system. It is used to take the signal from the current transformer. Then if the current exceeds a certain limit or it detects abnormal condition, such as over current, over voltage, over frequency, under frequency, and etc. So according to this condition, it will take an action and provides a signal to circuit breaker in order to act as the muscles in order to open the circuit. So the relays are classified according to number one, their function. What, uh, what is the function of this relay? Number two, the construction of the relay. Number three, the time characteristics. So according to the function, the relay can be classified according to the function as number one, over current relay, over voltage, under voltage, directional power relay, differential relay, distance relay, under frequency, over frequency, and earth fault relay. Now, all of this are considered as a different functions of the relay. One relay can be used as an over current protection. If the current exceeds a certain value, we will start operating the uh, circuit breaker in order to trip the circuit. Over voltage, if the voltage exceeds a certain limit in the circuit, then the relay will give a signal to circuit breaker in order to open the circuit. Under voltage, if the voltage is below a certain limit. The directional power relay, if the power, the direction of the power is reversed, or the current is reversed with a certain value, then the relay will trip. The differential relay, this one is used to detect the internal faults inside a generator or a transformer. Distance relay, this type of relay measures the Z or the impedance of the line. And according to the value of the impedance, it will take an action, either to uh, trip the circuit or not. So it is used to protect the transmission lines. Under frequency, it seems that it is used for uh, protection against under frequency when the frequency is below the cer below certain limits. Over frequency, it is used to protect against the over frequency uh, in case of the frequency exceeds a certain limit. Earth fault relay, it is used to protect against the earth fault uh, occurrence inside our system. So we'll find that the relay is divided here according to the function. According to the function, it can be over current relay, over voltage, and etc. Now, in the next lectures, we will discuss each of these relays in details. In order to understand how does the overcurrent works, the overvoltage, the directional power, differential, distance, all of this, how do they work? Okay. Now, the second type of the classification of the relay is according to the construction. It can be number one, electromechanical or electromagnetic relay, in which the contact of relay is closed by the force produced. In this video, we will discuss these types of relay, in which depends on the value of the current and produces a mechanical force in order to close its contacts. Another type of relay according to the construction is a static or solid state relay. This one is made of electronic circuit. Another type of relay is called the digital or microprocessor based relay. This one uses uh, digital signals in order to open and close relay contacts. So we have three main types. The electromechanical, which involves uh, action or motion or force, uh, mechanical parts in order to trip the circuit. 
The static and digital one consists of electronic circuits, electronic components. Other one, which is a microprocessor relay, which use digital signals in order to analyze the uh, the case if it is a fault or not. Now, comp a small comparison between the three types is that reliability of the electromagnetic is known. It has a higher reliability. The static does not have its reliability is low. Why? Because the static relay uh, is affected by temperature. The digital reliability is increasing with time. Does it require DC source? The electromagnetic does not require any DC source. Its uh, source of power is the current from the current transformer. So not required. But the static and digital since they are electronic and a microprocessor both of them need a DC source to operate them does it contain self-checking if it is has a fault or not the electromagnet does not perform this but the static does not perform the digital perform a self-check the adjustment of the current and the time characteristics the electromagnetic and static are limited but as you see that the digital is very wide range the cost, the electromagnetic is increasing due to the presence of mechanical parts, but the static is falling and the digital is falling with time. The volume, of course, since the electromagnetic have uh, electro and mechanical parts, so it will have a bulky size. But the static and digital, since it is a small electronic circuit and small microprocessor, then it is small, of course. The moving parts, the electromagnetic, of course, have moving parts because it contains mechanical parts. So present, the static and digital does not have any mechanical parts. Now, according to the time characteristics, the relay can be uh, classified according to the time characteristics itself. It can be, you'll see that we have a relation between the time of the relay itself and the value of the current or the short circuit current. So you'll, feel, you'll see that we have the instantaneous type, the definite type, this one definite type, the uh, inverse type, the uh, inverse definite minimum time. So let's discuss each of them. Number one, the instantaneous type, this one, when the current exceeds the big up value, when the uh, current exceeds the big up value the relay operates as soon as possible when the i big or the big up value is reached this time would be very small in just a few cycles so it will operate as instantaneously or as fast as possible second type is the inverse time relay the operating time of the relay is inversely proportional with the current so what does this mean? It means that when the current increases, the value of the short circuit current increases uh, or the current increases beyond the big up value, as it increases, the time of the relay will start to decrease. You will see that the inverse here, this one is the inverse, this one. You will see that before the big up, the current, the time here, the time, tends to infinity. Okay, so it does not operate. As the current exceeds the big up value, you will see that the time here starts to decrease. The time equivalent to the value of higher current decreases. Let's draw it in order to understand. So we'll see that here, this is the inverse type, like this, and value of another current. So we'll see that this time, T1, for example, and I1, T2, and I2. Okay, so as the uh, value of the current I2 is greater than I1, so the time T2 is less than T1. So as the value of the current increases, the time starts to decrease. Okay, which is of course something which is good because we would like to trip as fast as possible when the current is high. 
definite minimum time lag or uh, uh, inverse as a definite time minimum uh, minimum time lag this one what does this mean this one this means let's delete all of this first it means that when the current exceeds the peak of value it will start operating at a certain value of current whatever the value of the current it will remain constant so it will operate at a certain time uh, regardless of the value of the current so it operates after a certain time regardless of the value of the current the inverse definite minimum time or idmt this one you will sign this starts as an inverse then when it reaches a certain value it starts to become definite so it starts as an inverse then it changes to definite at a certain value of current now let's discuss the types of the electromagnetic relays or the overcurrent relays first type is the attraction type a solenoid type balanced beam and attached armature type second type is the induction type so let's see these two types of the electromagnetic relays and how do they work the first type is the solenoid type this one is made of a solenoid as you see here first we take the current from the current transformer the secondary of the current transformer the current here flows inside a coil which is around a magnet okay now when the current here flowing inside here flows through the coil a force will be produced if the current exceeds a certain value or the big up value then you will find that this piece of metal or plunger will be moved upward so what will happen when this part moves upward it will align on the relay contacts here so the relay contacts here will be closed and the trip circuit of the circuit breaker will be energized so again when the current from the current transformer passes in the coil a force will be produced on the plunger so the plunger will move upward closing the relay contacts so when the current exceeds the big up value it will produce a large force which would be enough to move this part upward and align here to close the relay contacts so when the relay contacts are closed the trip circuit will be operated and circuit breaker will trip the circuit how we can control the relay settings here number one the time settings we can control the time of at which our relay will operate by controlling the initial position of the plunger so if we make the position here if we move it upward then it means that it will take less time in uh, closing its contacts if we take this part and move it downward here for example then it will take longer time in order to move upward so the time settings here when the time at which it will take from moving from here to the relay contacts here it depends on the initial position of this uh, part the current settings the current or the big up current can be controlled by coil tapping or changing number of turns of the coil so by changing the number of turns of the coil we can change the inductance the resistance of the coil so in this case we will change the value of the current at which our uh, um, coil or our uh, relay will operate or the big up current by changing the number of turns we will change the number of um, coil the number of turns so we will change the l or the inductance and the, resist the resistance so we will change the value of the current another type which is the balanced beam type this one is consisting of a spring as you see here a hinge in order to hold this uh, part uh, this metallic part and you will find here a small metal here and you'll find here an electromagnet magnet which have a coil okay and the relay contacts here and the trip circuit of the circuit breaker at first the current here from the uh, current transformer similar to the uh, case of the solenoid 
the current will move through the, the coil producing a certain force at normal operation the force produced by this current will be equal to the spring force so in this case this uh, part or this uh, metallic part this one or this all of this will be in the horizontal position now if the current exceeds the peak of value of the um, of the relay in this case the force will be, the current will produce a large force and attract this mechanical part or this metal part so in this case this part will move downward and the relay contacts will move downward to close the trip circuit of the circuit breaker so for i or the current less than the big up current the spring force and the electromagnetic force are equal the electromagnetic force and the spring force are equal to each other so the beam remains balanced okay at horizontal position now for i greater than big up current the electromagnetic force will be stronger than spring so if the current is greater than the big up current the electromagnetic force produced will be strong enough to uh, overcome the spring force so this part will move downward and the relay contacts will be closed now the relay setting can be controlled by current settings by coil tapping or changing number of turns of the coil okay we can uh, control the current by changing number of turns similar to the solenoid case and of course the initial position of this part of the electromagnet can change the time characteristics another type which is the attached armature type this one is also electromechanical uh, relay or electromagnetic relay now we'll find that it consisting of a, a you can say a magnetic circuit here with an arm or armature and you will find that the current here coming and going through a coil okay this current is from the uh, current transformer so when it flows through the coil it will produce a force or flux in order to move this part or this one to the right okay it will produce a force which will use which will cause the armature to move to the right so when the current exceeds the peak and value this armature will move to the right and the relay contacts will be closed so when the current flowing in the coil exceeds the peak up current the electromagnet attracts the armature okay so the relay contacts closes and energizes so when the current flows here exceeds the peak up value it will produce a force enough to attract this armature to the right and causes the relay contacts to be closed the relay setting can be changed by time settings adjusted by screw the initial position of the armature so this armature can be in this position or it can be like this in this part from here to here or it can be closer to the relay contact so as it comes close it will take smaller time if it is in this direction for example in this case then it will take longer time the current setting can by coil tapping or changing number of turns of coil similar to the previous of the solenoid and the balanced beam now the second type is the induction disc relay type you see that in the previous case the attached armature type the solenoid type the balanced beam all of this are depending on the value of the current so they are called over current relays when the current exceeds the big up current the uh, the armature for example will attract the uh, magnet electromagnet will attract the armature or the uh, so in the balanced beam the force will exceed the spring force and attract the metal part and in the uh, solenoid type it will cause the plunger to move upward so they are electromechanical and they depend on the value of the current now similarly here we have an element to be protected or a transmission line for example any component here we have the current transformer 
then the current transformer the secondary of it will be connected to a coil this coil will be well when the current passes through it will produce a certain amount of flux this flux will move upward and cut this coil so when the uh, flux cuts this coil current will be produced and the flows or uh, induced mf will be produced and the current will flow so let's draw it to understand it so at the beginning the current here comes from the current transformer like this so it will produce a certain flux when this flux cuts this coil it will produce an induced mf e for example e1 and it will cause current to flow okay current to flow like this so the current flows here like this and produce a certain amount of flux which will go through using a saturation transformer to the second part and the flux will cut this coil as well so it will produce another induced mfe which will produce a certain amount of current okay like this okay so what will happen when the current here this current will produce a flux on the upper part like this phi one phi one and the current flowing here on the upper one current flowing here will produce flux number two and we have here an aluminium disc so when the flux number two cuts the disc it will produce 80 currents inside it flux cuts a metallic part so it will cause current to flow and eddy current produced i2 i2 is produced by phi2 and the phi1 when it cuts the disc it will cause i1 to flow so we have here phi2 phi1 i1 i2 okay and we have a breaking or damping magnet in order to hold the disc at its place and we have here the disc is uh, we have here a spring which prevents the disc from rotating okay and we have at this spindle which is uh, in the uh, center of the disc contains a relay contact so when the when the current exceeds the peak of value this will cause a torque inside the disc and that will cause it to rotate for example in the clockwise direction and closes the relay contents so let's make it clear here by understanding it again so at the beginning the lower pole has two coils this lower pole has two coils when the current from the ct passes through the lower coil when the current passes here through the lower coil it will produce a flux number one which will cut the upper uh, coil phi number one the emf is produced on the upper coil on this coil the emf is transferred by means of the saturation transformer the induced emf here will be passed through the saturation transformer to the upper pole flux number two will be produced because e2 here will cause current and this current will cause a flux number two flux number one and two induces ed currents i1 and i2 inside the disc the interaction between different flux and the current produce torque so what does this mean it means that if phi1 phi1 interacts with a different current i2 and phi2 interacts with a different current i1 so phi2 and i1 produce a torque phi1 and i2 produce a torque since they are from a different sources so example flux 1 and current i2 flux number 2 and i1 three torques here are produced number one the deflecting torque the torque which causes the disc to rotate the uh, torque which is used to uh, cause the disc to rotate is the uh, torque produced by phi2 i1 and phi1 i2 okay the deflecting torque 
used to rotate the disk. Second uh, torque is the control torque. This by spring to prevent the disk from rotating. Third torque is the damping torque by the damping magnet to prevent it also from rotating or breaking it, the breaking the uh, disk. So what happens here? At normal conditions, the deflection torque, the torque produces by, produced by the fluxes and the currents, is lower than the uh, damping torque or breaking torque by the magnet plus the spring. Both of them are greater than the deflection torque. So the relay contact will not be closed. At fault conditions, the deflection torque is greater than the damping plus control torques. So the relay contacts will be closed. Remember that this is rotating in space. The current settings here can be adjusted also by number of turns as we said before. Time settings is adjusted by the contact position, the initial position of the spindle. For example here, if it is like this, this spindle, if the relay contacts will be like this, like this, okay? So it will take longer time to reach here, from here, for example, from having two contacts here. It will take longer time, smaller time to reach here. So as the distance from here to the uh, trip contacts increases, the time uh, increases. The saturation transformer benefit here, this uh, part, this one, is used to produce definite minimum time characteristic. Now the uh, value of the torque produced here is equal to a certain constant k dash omega over the resistance R of the disk. Usually it is made of aluminum in order to make this resistance low so the torque will be higher. Multiplied by flux number one, maximum uh, value of flux number one, multiplied by maximum value of flux number two, multiplied by sine alpha. So what is sine alpha? Sine alpha is the angle between flux number one and the flux number two. They should have a, a phase shift between them, okay? Or phase shift between the currents, okay? So sine alpha, when, the, when there is a phase shift, then uh, flux number one, then the torque would be existing. But if there is no phase shift between phi one and phi two, then alpha would be zero and torque will be zero. So we have to produce a phase shift between phi 1 and phi 2 in order to produce a torque. So in this video we discussed the relay, the types of relay according to function, types of relay according to construction, and the electromagnetic relays uh, such as the induction disk relay, the attraction type relay, the solenoid and balanced beam relays. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you enjoy it and learn it from it. Now I would like to invite you to my academy, Khadiga Academy. You will find the link for the academy in the description for this video. You can find their useful uh, courses, free and paid courses, which will help you as an electrical engineer. So check it out if you would like to learn more about it. Thank you.